Alright, I want to talk to you about StatCrunch, which is a statistical analysis tool that's integrated into my StatLab, which will help you with some of the heavy calculations that you're going to be performing in this course. Um, you've already experienced calculating a standard deviation, which you know that if you have more than just a few data values, it's going to be an arduous task to do. And the calculations only get more involved from here. So what I want to focus on is the fact that you can use StatCrunch to help you do the heavy lifting so that you can focus more on the statistical analysis, which is what is the important part of this course. So once you log into my StatLab and you're in your main screen for the course, you'll notice on the left-hand side that there is a link that says StatCrunch. If you left click Stack Crunch, that's going to open the following window and allow you to pull up data sets from your textbook or go directly to the Stack Crunch website. If you left click the Stack Crunch website, it takes you to this Stack Crunch webpage, which shows you an immense amount of resources that you can use with this course. But we're going to open Stack Crunch so that we can look at the interface and you'll see that it's very similar to what Excel looks like it's just a spreadsheet it's also very similar to other statistical application packages similar to SPSS you'll notice that there's some buttons up here across the top that will help you perform analyses on the data that we're going to be talking about you'll be able to use certain types of calculators you can summarize stats either by row or column. There are tables that we can create such as frequency and contingency. We can do Z stats which is going to be a normal distribution. We'll be doing T stats which is going to be similar to the normal distribution but using larger or rather smaller samples we'll be talking about proportion stats, variance stats, we'll even be doing linear regression lines, uh, one-way an uh, analysis of variance, and there's a goodness of fit which is the chi-square test that we'll be talking about, and there's plenty of other aspects of this program that we won't use for this particular course. So that when you're in my math lab, or I'm sorry, my stat lab, and you're working on homework or quizzes and tests and you're in and let's just pull up a homework assignment so that we can look at it and once you've watched the video you know that you're going to be able to access the questions and I'll just pull up a question and we'll look at this question and I'll show you exactly how to access StatCrunch while you're in a question for example here is a data set you can do one of two things. You can either open the question help and you'll see that StatCrunch is listed here. Or you can take this little blue icon which means click to copy and you'll be presented with three choices. Open in StatCrunch, copy to clipboard, or open in Excel. For this course or for this example I'll go ahead and open in StatCrunch and it will open the StatCrunch window and you'll see that it's already populated and these are the data values from that data table and now I can go up here and I can do a number of different statistical analyses on it and I'm going to focus on the summary stats for right now so if I highlight summary stats and then I highlight columns and then click columns that brings up this interface if you have more than one column of data values and you'll notice that you can have an incredible number of data data columns but you want to click the one that you want to perform the analysis on and you can use control and click on more than one and down here you'll see the input window where if I left click N that's going to tell me how many values are in the data set I can go ahead and find the mean I can find the variance of a sample and I can find a standard deviation of a sample there's going to be standard error. I can find the median. I can find the range. It will find the minimum value, the maximum value. 
your quartile 1, quartile 3, and remember that median is also your quartile 2. It can find the sum of the column. It'll find the interquartile range between Q1 and Q3. The unadjusted variance is going to be when you're discussing a population. Likewise, unadjusted standard deviation is when you're discussing a population. Then there's your coefficient of variance. This talks about skewness, kurtosis, and this will also tell you if there's a mode. So for this particular example, I just want you to experience what happens when we find the mean and the standard deviation. And let's go ahead and find the median. And we will go ahead and find the range. And we'll find quartile 1 and quartile 3. And now, once I've highlighted that, you'll see that they appear in this window on the right-hand side. We'll go ahead and left-click Compute. And this window will show you that we did variance 1, for the, or I should say variable 1 for the column. The mean was 16.236. The standard deviation is 1.73, and you'll notice it carries it out to seven decimal places. But for most exam or most problems in this course, three decimal places will be sufficient. The median is 15.85. The range is 5.55. Quartile one is 15.15, and quartile three is 17.5. And you'll notice that the median, which is quartile 2, falls between Q1 and Q3. So that's just a simple example of what you can do with this. And you can even go in and you can save it, you can copy it, you can print it, you can download it, you can edit it, you can even delete it. And I can do that with a number, or I can use the data to do a number of different statistical analyses. And that's what we're going to do throughout the course. And I will be posting videos that show you how to use this for various problems within throughout the textbook.